Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking about hiring new people. How do you do it? Where do you find them? What do you look for? Everything is coming up. If you have employees or it's your first employee of the year, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. If it's your first time, have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck, at least better than a cat video maybe. Uh, but there is 140 plus episodes all coming out every single Friday, all 30 minutes or longer, so go binge away. If you're binging, let me know. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. Uh, every week, I get multiple people that just feel like, ah, I'm on, I just did 60 episodes this week. Super awesome, so... Definitely uh, keep that up. Uh, if you're not new here, thanks for coming back and hanging out some more. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, somebody who watches every episode, you thumbs up the YouTube video, you've left uh, comments, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me because I am a sales rep at windowcleaner.com, then what's up? It's because of you that Sean Herring says, I get some brand name sour cream. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, it doesn't cost you any extra to have me put your orders in. It's just like a virtual high five of awesomeness. I want all of you to be my customers. So definitely do that. 862-312-2026. Now is the time of year that we're all getting ready for uh, the year. So supplies, big or small, it doesn't matter. I just want to put every order in. People even go overnight, put everything in their cart, and then they're like, yo, Jersey, put my order in. And uh, at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off your entire order for reals. So, uh, but you got to order through me. So 862-312-2026. Okay. So I got a bunch of uh, what's up to say today. First off, I want to stay, start by saying what's up to Chris Williams, and uh, hopefully this will impress his wife. He doesn't think so, but maybe. Uh, what's up to Chris? What's up, Anthony Cox, uh, Ray Connor, Tyler Weaver, the man, uh, Jason Thomas, what's going on? Uh, Bill Majeski, what's up, brother? And, uh, of course, uh, we already brought up uh, Sean Herring for his sour cream. Thank you for the sour cream, my friend. Uh, but thanks to everybody. I know I can't give everybody shouts out, shout outs. Um, I try. Those are just some amazingly awesome people. If you don't know them and you see them out in public, make sure to give them a high five from me. But uh, cool. So today we're talking about hiring. Now, uh, we've touched on hiring before, but it's always a big kind of headache, thorn, whatever you want to call it. It sucks. Hiring sucks. I always say like my next job is going to be like in a coal mine somewhere where all I have to do is worry about my bird dying and I don't have to deal with employees or people. But employees suck. It's just a matter of fact. They're not going to care about things like you do. Um, there's a lot of bad ones out there before you find a good one. Um, the, con the, the, the argument between do you hire young who aren't as responsible but can work better or old who are responsible but don't have the energy to work as fast. It's, there's always something when it comes to hiring. So we're going to talk a little bit about hiring. Um, if you have employees or it's your first year that you're thinking about having employees, comment down below on YouTube. That's where we talk. Uh, but uh, drop a line, uh, pull a Ryan Fuster, just give us a thumbs up uh, if you can. But um, let me know what your employee stat, uh, situation is. Um, the most employees I ever had was 10 at one time. Um, that's like office staff and cleaning people. So for me, I never was so big uh, employee-wise. I'm doing 30, 40 employees. So I feel like the more employees you have, the easier it is. And I'll explain that concept. When you have one employee and that employee doesn't show up, you have too much work for one person. That's why you have an employee. If that person doesn't show up, they quit or they're sick or anything. It is a burden that cannot be absorbed by one person, usually. And that's the hard part, right? But don't go out there and hire 10 employees to try to get to the point where then it can be a little absorbed. If one person's out, you can kind of move things around so that all the rest of the 10 people are taking the workload and it can be still done. 
Uh, but you have to start somewhere. And that's where employees are. Now, if you don't ever want employees and you're still listening, that's awesome. I really appreciate you guys still uh, picking stuff out of these. Um, but that's cool. That's totally, you know, there is no wrong or right way to run your business. Employees or not employees. Now, if you ever want to be a big company, you're talking 250000 a year up to, you know, six plus figures, you have to obviously have employees. If your goal is to just stay at that 100, 150 with just you, that's awesome. That's awesome. But employees are a necessary evil to get to those larger numbers. Now, another thing to think about employees is that every dollar the employee earns takes money out of your pocket. So say you're doing 65 an hour, we'll say. Now, when you're working by yourself, you make 65 an hour. When an employee makes 65 an hour, not only are they not making you the, say, 15, 20 bucks an hour they're making, but now there's all the taxes on top of that. Say that's another $10 an hour for taxes, benefits, all that fun stuff. So now they're at $30 an hour. Now they're also in a truck because they're in their own crew, say, they have their own equipment, they have their own shirts and logos and letters. That's another, say, $5 an hour, right? You see all this is starting to add up. So they're really only bringing you X amount of work uh, or money back into it. You're really only gonna make a percentage of what they make. Now, if you're paying on commission, awesome. It's easier to kind of figure out how you're making your money and what you're making. There's a lot that still goes into it. Uh, I had a uh, dude, and I'm just blanking on his name. Oh my gosh. Anyway, a couple weeks ago, bookkeeper. Had a guy on, uh, super cool dude. Uh, we talked about it, and we talked about commission. He loves commission. I am on the hourly side, so there's different ways to do it. No wrong way or right way, um, but you got to find what works for you. But where do you find new guys? Like, let's start the hiring process. Where do you find people that are your demographic? that A, truly want to work outside. That's the big thing, right? People always are like, oh, what every job interview I've ever done for any employee, and I've hired probably 100 plus, hundreds of employees, I would say, in my entire career, right? The one thing that I get in every single one is, oh, I just always wanted to work outside. I love working outside. Oh, I just can't work the, I can't be stuck in an office, right? But if they've not worked outside, they don't realize. All they do is on a nice day, they're sitting inside and they look outside and they go, man, it'd be nice to work outside. Which happened what? 10 times a year <laughs> that are perfect. And even then, we still have mosquitoes to deal with and bugs and wasps and we have bushes and thorns and we have scrapes and scratches, heat, sun, clouds, overcast and rain and snow if you're in one of those clients, climates. You have a lot to deal with. So working outside is not kind of as glorious as people think, but you have to find the right person. Now, you can't go to Harvard or Yale and put up a sign saying, looking for window cleaners, because those people are on a different path. They're looking for a different job. So you have to find where people are that you would pull employees from. There's a couple really good places. I love posting at tech colleges. Uh, you know, when you have a community college, usually they have uh, degrees and things that they're working for. They're all over the place, but you may find somebody who's going to be a mechanic. You may find somebody who is going to be, you know, a, uh, a, a painter or a, you know, all the trades that you kind of get through in the community college side of things. I have a degree in radio broadcasting. There you go. I guess it kind of works. Anyway. Uh, so you're finding people all over the spectrum. So posting things when people are still in school, uh, they have summer jobs, they have internet classes. When they graduate, they're not necessarily getting a job right out of the gate. You know, they may know what they want to work at, but don't have that particular job. It's a great option. Uh, another great option is going to be like um, military installations where um, you have, um, uh, gosh, I'm just having one of those days where I can't remember anything. But uh, National Guard, post up there. Those guys are looking for work sometimes. You know that they're hardworking. You know their work ethic is there. Um, you know that working outside in crappy climates isn't going to be a terrible thing for them, right? 
That's what you're trying to look for. That's what you're looking to say, okay, here's where I post. Here's where I get people. My all-time favorite is still going to be Craigslist, though. And it's a double-edged sword of suck and awesome. Because Craigslist is like trolling the ocean with a big net. You're going to catch some stuff, but you got to throw a lot of stuff back. That's Craigslist. There's ways to get around that to make it a little bit more specific. But Craigslist... It's across the board. You can get all different types of people, people who don't even necessarily want your job. They blanket post to everybody. And there's a, a, a hack, if you will, to get around that. But Craigslist, you're gonna get a ton, a ton of people. I've hired my best people that I've ever had off of Craigslist. That's my number one place I, I hire is off of Craigslist. The next place that uh, you can hire people that um, I would say is up there because you're going to get awesome people is from your employees. I always ask them, like, guys, you guys know anybody? Anybody need a job? You know, blah, blah, blah. Like, sometimes people want to work with their friends. Even if they don't, I may not put them on the same crew, but if Steve loves what he does, he's going to want his friends to also work there, right? Oh, yeah, I got a dude who just got laid off. You know, you want to give him a chance? Yeah, bring him in. The big thing with hiring is you always have to be hiring. Always be hiring. That's A-B-H to just screw up the thing. And you have to always be hiring. If you're always hiring, then you're not going to be as far out from the suck. Because here's, here's the truth of it. As you're posting these resumes where we're talking, or posting a job posting, you're still, still weeks away from getting somebody. Because now you have to post it, you have to get the resumes in, you have to set up an interview, you have to do the interview if they show up. Then you have to do the trial and then you have to, right? So let's take some of that away in the beginning and have a steady flow of people already being halfway prepped so that it's a lot quicker, right? So that's the first step. Get your posting out there and here is the thing. With a posting, if you're boring or you are a jerk or any of that stuff, then you're not going to get a good person. If you put a post and go, I'm looking for people who work, not those sissies who don't work, you don't like it, I need somebody to bust their hump, and if you don't bust your hump, don't even bother applying. Well, guess what? Those people aren't getting anybody. I don't want to work there. You sound like an absolute jerk. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to work for you. I don't want to do anything. I get your intentions, and I understand where the anger comes into play. But be awesome. Be cool. Explain your position, right? You know it's working outside. You know it's window cleaning. But how do you make that kind of schnazzy? My posting always, always were looking for someone awesome or looking for a superhero or looking for, right, get somebody to catch because they got to open it. And then I'm going to say, we're a window cleaning company. We're looking for somebody awesome who wants to work, you know, outside and have a great time. We're a relaxed area where we get all our work done, but have a ton of fun while we do it. Tons of perks. Here's a, And I go and talk. I don't talk about the work because you know what window cleaning is. I don't need to explain the work. I don't need to tell you to show up on time. I don't need to tell you any of that. I need to sell you to apply because the better person knows that they're a better person. They can go and hire, uh, apply anywhere. So I put this thing and I sell them. It's awesome to work for us. And I really, truly believe that. If you work for me, you are going to love what you do. I just, that's why my turnaround rate is just so stinking low. It's just they love working for me. And that sounds super cocky, but I work really, really, really hard to keep employees. That's the key is keeping employees. It takes so much time to get new ones in. Why not keep them? So I put all that down. And on the bottom of that um, slip or the, the, um, uh, request the the job posting if you will i put in big asterisks bold letters uh when reply with your resume and the subject line put i am awesome and i put that big letters on the bottom i can't miss it biggest font i biggest font i can because guess what that's how you uh screen people who read the, the the thing and didn't i've gotten people probably dozens and dozens of people who said hey the job doesn't sound like something I would like, but I just want to tell you your ad is awesome. I've gotten literally dozens, more than I know, 
of those. Every time I post it, it's at least one or two that people are like, dude, the, your ad's awesome, even though I'm not, I don't work outside or I'm looking for a management position or something, you know? It catches people. People are looking at it. And then that gets you good customer or good clients coming in. Now, when I get my slew of resumes, which I'm going to get a bunch of emails, right? You're trying to get as many as you are. You're posting everywhere you can, right? If I'm making a paper posting or I'm posting up at a local college or if I'm posting at the uh, uh, National Guard or any of the other services that you can post jobs, I always put, I am awesome. Your subject line has to say, I am awesome. Now, if I switch that, sometimes it's, I'm your superhero or whatever, something that's out of the norm because guess what? When you get 50 resumes in, 20 of them, if not more, will not say that in the subject line. I delete them and do not look at them ever. They could be a great client, but you've already shown me you don't read. You can't follow directions. And all I can do is assume that you're just blanketing and you don't care. I want somebody to care. I want somebody to look at that and go, man, that sounds like something for me, right? So that's the first trick in getting your resumes. You weed out a bunch of them right away because here's the thing. We're looking for the best employee, not just an employee, right? You're looking for a great employee. Now, you may have to hire 10 people to find your one really good employee, but that really, really limits the uh, headaches that you're going through. Now, the second headache of hiring is after those say we're down to 20 resumes now in the first batch we're doing uh, interviews for. I do slots uh, all day that are 30 minutes long. 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes on the 30 minutes, I do uh, those. I might take off for lunch or something, you know. But I do it every 30 minutes. Now, 30 minutes gives you enough time for them to walk in, do their thing. It takes about 10 minutes to talk to them. And walk out and not have to, like, walk past each other. Because that sucks. Like, we're not looking to do that either. So every 30 minutes, I can still get work done, right? If there's calls and things, I can answer them between the next one, but every 30 minutes. The problem is, is that out of those 20 interviews you set up, maybe, maybe five will actually show up to the interview. That's the truth. I don't care how awesome your posting is. I don't care how awesome your job is or how much you know follow-up you did or how great they are on the phone or any of that stuff. I also do a little bit of a phone interview, uh, just ask them a couple quick questions, and if they're interested or they sound like something, if they, uh, yeah, um, so, um, like if that's them on the phone, I'm like, oh, okay, great, well, hey, thanks a lot, we're still getting all our resumes in, and we'll call you when we want to set up the appointment uh, to uh, meet, or the, the you know, in-person interview, because I'm not going to... Uh, I'm telling you, you could tell a lot when you do this long enough. And I'm not going to hire that person. You sound slow. I don't need you and my crew being slow and not. It's just I've had people where I've struggled to try to get them the time. There's some people just aren't designed for it. So that's the first one. That That's really getting those interviews. Once you actually get your five people in your interview, if they seem even close to awesome, they've done all the steps to get there. I'm going to have them on for probably, you know, at least one day worth of work to just shadow see how they work with the crew here's the big thing now talk to your hiring companies and all that but if you have somebody on for a day they make under the um uh taxable rate and they are technically a subcontractor at that point if they're not using any of your tools they're not doing anything they're just kind of hanging out now you got to talk to your municipality see if it's legal in your area blah 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 but I want to put them out there for a day. I want to pay them for that day. But I want to see what they do. Because I've had people. First five minutes of being in the car, I've had a guy who he's wearing gloves because uh, he's got some blood disorder that he can't have. He can't get cut or it's super infectious. Like we work with razors. That's not great. Uh, we work in bushes and everything else. Uh, and then he hands out stapled pamphlets about legalizing marijuana. I don't care if you smoke or not. The big thing is, is that's not what you do when you first get into a car. Like, I obviously understand that whatever vibe you are is not a work vibe. Like, you don't understand what's going on. So, something like that, I figured that out right away. I didn't have to hire them in and find out that they suck, right? So, I get those guys in 
Uh, and I say guys, it can be girls. I've hired one woman like my entire career. The only person's ever applied that was a, a woman. She lasted like uh, a day, two days. Uh, and it just wasn't for her. She just was, it just wasn't for her. Maybe it is, but I don't mean to uh, say guy or girl, but you know what I'm saying. So um, having those people that do come in, getting the interview, now they're out in the field. You get to see if they vibe with the other staff awesome because i want an awesome work environment if they're opposite right oh my work staff is just chill and cool and whatever you know they work together great we put pairs the pairs of uh crews we work in twos uh except for routes uh, singles but all pairs of twos are people that get along really 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 well i don't want a yin and yang i want people to get along really really well because they make the whole day go by easy they make it go by great and they like working so if I put somebody in and they don't vibe, it's like, uh, no, like I, always. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. End of the day, pay them for their day. Say, we'll give you a call and let you know uh, where we are. I sit down with the, op, the, the crew chief from that crew that they were put on and say, yo, what's the deal? And they usually are like, yeah, they're, they're good. You know, sometimes they're like, ah, oh, he's great. He's really good. Okay, cool. He vibed with you. That means that's awesome. Right. Sometimes they're like, no, it's not going to work out. Like, they know too, right? Now we're on. Do you see how now we had 50 applications come in and now we're down to five people that are doing actual ride-alongs, if you were. And out of that, we're going to maybe have two, maybe three that actually work. And out of that, then we'll start these people, right? And I will always have more new staff than I need because then you can figure out who is going to go where, you have the staff that's needed. If they're not in, as they start, they may not have to have 40 hours a week right away, but they have to be trained. You have to see if they're still getting trained. Now, in the first week, maybe they just don't work out. To You can tell it's just not working out. Maybe. But at least you get them out there and working. That's how you do um, hiring, in my opinion, as far as just getting those people in there. And you're always hiring. Now, with the ABH, to always be hiring, going and doing interviews, always accepting applications, um, you know, always having resumes on file. Here's the thing. If I have a guy quit, but I've already gone through, done the phone interview, set up a real one, said, Hey, uh, we really liked your resume. You know, when I'm doing the interview, I'm going to say, I really liked your resume. You look like a really cool dude. You know, everything that, that just seems like it really goes well. Um, right now we don't have the need, uh, but I want to get this interview done. Um, and we'll definitely keep you in the loop. It, you know, could be a couple weeks. What happens is if I get busy, I have somebody. If somebody quits, I have somebody. If somebody sucks, they don't have you by the short hairs. If somebody's awful, you can fire them because you know you have people waiting in the wings. Now, here's the thing. For that person, he may call every week and just check in, which is awesome. That just shows me he really wants a job, but I'm going to try even harder to get him in. On the second side is I've called people and out of five people, four of them will say, oh yeah, I don't have a job yet because they're still looking for something that's right. Or they say, ah, oh, man, I started working at the recycling plant. I just don't like it here, man. I'll definitely, I'm coming work for you. Like, okay, do you need to do two weeks or what's your, all that. Okay. Having people always waiting there is how we don't uh, get ourselves in a pinch. I've been there. I know if you guys are running employees, you've been to that time where, employee issues or lack of employees really just screwed up your income, screwed up your jobs. You had to cancel, reschedule. It's horrible. Why not alleviate that and always have people in the wings, right? Now, the big thing, and I, I talk about this again in other episodes. Go back and watch if you want. But the biggest thing with hiring people is running them through a temp agency. That is one of the biggest and best money-saving headache relieving things I've ever, ever done in business. And let me explain. If you don't know anything about it, what I do is I run my employees, I hire them, I find them, I hire them, I bring them on, and then I call my boy Tim. And I say, Tim, what's up? I got two new guys starting, they'll be there tomorrow, 8.30, right? That's our onboard times eight, usually 8.30 by the time he gets in, whatever. He says, great, all right, I'll be there. He shows up in his fancy suit because he's an HR guy, and he signs them up for everything. He does all the paperwork with them, and now they are legal employees of the temp agency working for me. Now, you're like, well, why do you want temps? You don't want people to actually work for you? Here's why. 
through the temp agency, not only do they do all the audits and the, you know, when the state calls and says, we're here, we're going to be auditing your employees. I say, I don't have employees. I use temps. They have to then contact them. They take care of all the legal stuff, the paperwork, the documents, making sure they're certified to blah, 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 all that, plus workers' comp. And I offer term life, term disability, full medical, dental, and vision to my employees. Not only that, but our package plans that we run, I pay uh, paid holidays, and I have paid time off all through that. It's all part of it. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Now, I've had people who tried to find it in the area, had a, a little bit of an issue. I've used Express Payroll Services in the past, and uh, they've been great. Uh, I used a guy who broke off from there, and then he started his own agency, and that's what I used. But you're just looking for temp agencies, looking for pay, uh, payroll companies, things like that, who run temps. It's amazing. The other thing about it is, is that if I don't like somebody for handing out marijuana advocacy documents in the first five minutes of being there, right? Or whatever it is. You fart in my office. I I don't know what it is. I don't need to have you there anymore. I can call them and say, hey, you know what? Uh, Ted is not needed anymore. They take care of all the rest. They find them another job. They're not just left out there. And I don't have to work to a specific code or... um, Uh, employee manual or worry about okay well is this technically do i have to write him up like he's being horrible like i had a guy one time who for whatever reason decided to just blow up like just throwing stuff just ah well technically nothing that he did would have constituted being fired like really in an employee manual you know it didn't say anywhere in there like you can't have a temper tantrum but I was able to just let him go. Like, okay, you've shown your true colors. I don't know what's going on, but I don't need this. I'm sorry I'm ruining your life by having you work here. It just it wasn't a good fit. I got to then alleviate that for any reason because, again, they're temp employees. Now, the other thing is if you're in a cold area, you get a seasonal layoff. You can run seasonal layoff. Or if somebody does not want layoff, they can actually find seasonal work. So say you in the wintertime slow down and you need to put somebody on a three-month you know, hiatus. Temp agency could put them in a machinery job for three months. There's so many benefits. So many benefits. The downside to it is none that I've found so far. None. I'm telling you I paid 37% uh, on. So that means that every $10 I paid an extra $3.70. You're like, if you don't have employees, you're like, that's a lot. No, no, it's not. Like that's workers comp. That's my end of the taxes. That's my end of the, um, you know, uh, uh, benefits. That's all of that. And I have a company where somebody's got a question on their payroll or their insurance or their what. All right, call Tim. Here's his card. They handle it all. For that amount of money, I would 1,000 billion percent be happy, happy to have somebody take all those headaches. So run them through a temp agency. That is the second biggest, I guess, thing with employees. It's one of those days, man. I'm telling you. Uh, The number one thing, though, I think is keeping them happy. Now, I said this before, but if you don't keep an employee happy, they'll leave. And all that BS that you just went through that I just talked about was for nothing. Employees are expensive, especially in the beginning. If you're going to hire employees, expect to spend money. You need to keep them on to train them where they're not making you much money, but you're paying them. Like you will lose money to bring an employee on. It costs money for new gear. Costs money for their truck, their insurance, the payroll, the onboarding, the everything. It takes up your time to interview them. It takes up the cruise time to then babysit somebody. All of that is not an issue if they stay for a while. If you have an employee for five years, that like month of, of not making money over five years is nothing. Now, if you have somebody that leaves after a month because you suck as a boss, well, that's, that's expensive. And you get to have the control on what kind of environment you want. Make an environment that you want to work in. That's as simple as it is. As much as you want to work there, that means somebody else wants to work there. That's at least where I go for it. I've talked about it again. Go back, watch some other episodes if you haven't already. But I have ping pong tables in my shop. I have a fully stocked fridge. I buy them food. We have uh, meetings every Friday after work at uh, one of our food places. Like... 
I don't need to be your best friend. I know that's awkward. I'm not going to your daughter's birthday. If you have, if I'm invited, maybe I'll go bring the family or something. But that's not the thing. I'm not trying to be your best friend because here's the thing. If you respect me and you respect what I'm doing or what I'm trying to provide, you're going to respect me even as a boss. I've had friends work for me years. He worked for me for six years. A very good friend. And you know what happened? When we were off work, it was work. It was uh, friends. When we were on work and I was like, hey, here's a tooth- toothbrush. Go clean that tile. You'd be like, all right, cool. It's going to take me a little bit. Said, Absolutely. Right? They can still respect you if you run an awesome. No one's respecting the guy who put it in the application. I hate somebody who works. If you don't work, then you don't go here. And No one wants to work for that guy. He sounds like a jerk face. <sighs> ah, sorry. Well, thanks. If you made it this far in the episode... Thanks for listening to me uh, stumble over words. I don't know. I didn't finish my, I didn't drink my coffee yet. I think that's what it is. Either way. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, 100%. um, This exists because you guys are here and watching and listening. The code this week, the reason that I get to live, because, you know, when I put in your stuff, I get credit for it and boom, I'm buying name brand stuff. See my eyebrows? You can't see if you're listening. I'm I'm uh, raising my eyebrows in a suggestive way to say, huh? Huh? <laughs> but uh, my number is 862-312-2026. And the code this week is going to be jerk face. Yeah, what the heck? Why not? Jerk face is the code. All you need to do is just text me or call me or email me or anything and uh, tell me that code and I will give you 5% off your complete order, a virtual high five, and you will make my day. Plus, hopefully you're one of the people that I can uh, put on to uh, give a shout out to. So, um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, I really, really genuinely appreciate it, guys. Uh, Again, 862-312-2026. Code this week is jerkface. Call me and get your orders in, big or small. I truly don't care. Every order you ever put in, put it in your cart. Then shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, my address is correct. Use the card ending in 1234. Code is jerkface. And I will be extremely happy. So please do that. Uh, And until next week, go out there and be epic.